Zlatko, give us a snapshot of how you see your education reforms. Well, <clears throat> as, as Daniel said, I mean, being in the middle may be a dangerous place. Uh, you can imagine when Slovenia is in the middle, how dangerous places Bosnia and Herzegovina, which was literally in the middle of former Yugoslavia and the war that we had 20 years ago. Uh, as, as, uh, as, uh, as we heard yesterday from, from Vika Pota, I mean, don't, I don't want to hear any problems. I just want to hear some solutions. I mean, and people like us, right? Like, uh, Vika, when, when people like us would, are talking from their experience, they're usually talking about the problems that they were facing, too. And I will just talk about lessons learned and some solutions that I think are based on experience that we have. Uh, 20 years ago, the war was ended in Yugoslavia. It was the war in between two ways of seeing the future of the country. It was the war in between two visions, in between the vision of shared society on one side and the vision of segregated society on another side. 20 years ago, the war was over, and we had the three armies on the ground, out of which one was actually their generals were committed and they were sentenced in Hague for war crime, uh, named even genocide. So 10 years after the war, we managed to have what a lot of people thought the toughest reform. There was united three armies that were shooting to each other in one army. Uh, today they are together, the people that were against each other are shoulder to shoulder backing them in Iraq and Afghanistan in UN peacekeeping missions. But what we did, we did not manage to do is we did not manage to reform educational system properly and today we are actually teaching, preaching the kids which ultimately may end in three armies if we don't change educational system. So I found out that uh, uh, education is being on a margin, especially after a big crisis and when we are going into the nation building process. This is the reason why I think that we heard yesterday, I think from here, from this podium, Mr. Canada, that was coming from Carlin, who gave excellent comparison by saying that we who are gathered in here in education, we should be somehow like green team, American green team, put together and do something really substantially in education. I think that the governments in, for 21st century, they have to be dream teams for education. Mm -hmm. Ministers from different departments, as well as prime ministers, they have to understand that education deserves a completely different role that it used to have before. So if we want really to talk about the, let's say, the future, we have to create a little bit more sense of urgency based on complacency that is more than self-evident, as said. Sense of urgency, have a guiding coalition among all players in a government to do, to be one green team of educators and for education, regardless of the fact, are they ministers of agriculture, military, police, or whatever? Because we have to understand that in the governments, when we are in real politics, I mean, you have so-called, as one of my professors used to teach me, they are cold and hot ministries. Cold ministries are like research and development or education. You don't see the fruits so early. But hot ministries, we are all obsessed with hot ministries, finance, police, uh, you know, even healthcare. So we all have to somehow think and change the way of thinking in order to be a dream team for 21st century. Speed, change, technology, these things are something that we have to be aware of. Hot ministries, cold ministries, very interesting concept that, isn't it? How all ministries uh, are not exactly equal because some of them are judged more in, in present results uh, and some, if they do yield results, will, you know, will get the credit or the blame down the line. And that's that a very good point. I think policy people perhaps are more comfortable with that. Politicians, for good reasons, are often nervous about it.